In today's video, we are going to be reacting to Andrew Huberman's faith in God. Before we get started, make sure you guys definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button for the YouTube algorithm. That being said, let's jump right into this video. You mentioned it last night and this, this had me thinking. It's like, when you think how all that works, I have to take an aside and say, how could that happen in nature is without a creator? Yeah, so, well, here's the thing. I mean, we know that the programs, meaning genes, so genes, DNA, and there's DNA, then there's RNA, and then there's proteins. And proteins are the action end of the game where they say, hey, like, grow over here, don't grow over there, mm -hmm. you know, um, become this kind of cell, dopamine cell or a serotonin cell. We know that those mechanisms are incredibly well conserved from mice to humans. Now, mm -hmm. certain things happen in the human brain that you don't see in other species, like the elaboration of the parts of the brain that are involved in context and planning, mm -hmm. especially. But the memory systems, the ones that control hormones, breathing, heart rate, they're very similar. Mm -hmm. Not exactly the same, but very similar. Okay. When you start to study and understand brain development, as I did, or neuroplasticity, or dopamine, you have to, meaning I don't care if you're an atheist, agnostic, or believer in creator, you have to step back and just go, wow, wow. Now, then of course, there's this difference among scientists as to who believes in God, who mm -hmm. doesn't. I'll just go on record. I'm very comfortable saying it. I believe in God. I do. Mm -hmm. I think. Before Andrew Huberman does go ahead and further elaborate his point, I want to urge everyone, believer or not, Christian or Muslim, to just step outside of your own self and bask in the glory of creation itself. Like what Andrew Huberman said, it's you see all of these things around you. Sometimes what I do, what I tend to do is sometimes I'll go out of myself and just look at my hand and just move each individual finger, each individual joint. I'm double, you know, I'm double jointed so I can do that. <laughs> it's weird, I know. I don't know, I have a bendy thumb too. So I can go like this, I can go like that. It's so, it's so intricate and sometimes you look at the outside world, you look at the, the beauty of mountains. I was in California not a few months ago, and we were in Los Angeles, and I, I just loved the idea that we were eating in like a faux restaurant, and literally you, you, you look at the window and you see mountains. Like we don't, we don't have that in New York City. We just have like, we have the best skyline, I'll say that, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, just bask in the glory next time. I think there are many things that science can explain. Mm -hmm. There are certain things science can't explain, but I'll even go a step further, which is that all the elements of science are entirely compatible with the idea of there being a God. And I'm not the first scientist to say this. I mean, mm -hmm. Einstein believed in God. Um, Carl Jung, one of the greatest psychologists ever, clearly believed in God. There are many atheist scientists. There are agnostic scientists who are just kind of like unsure, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I'm in absolute awe, absolute awe of biology. Mm -hmm. It's just incredible that we're sitting here having this conversation is just, it's that with language that they're little sound yeah. waves that are, you're perceiving and understanding. I mean, it's just, and I think the brain represents the apex of incredible in terms of biology. Like the heart is interesting. The immune system is interesting. The liver is interesting, but the brain is unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, think about the number of different ways you can move your body compared to another species. Mm -hmm. Think about what you did today. Think about what I was attempting to do today, right? Yeah. Spectacular. Think about technology. These lights, the, you know, Tesla cars, spaceships. I mean, yeah. the internet. I mean, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And yet, oh, so real. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, we could talk a bit about how I, you know, well, I'll just say this. Secretly, I've always prayed. I grew up in a split religion home. My mm -hmm. family's like the UN. We've got people from Guatemala, <laughs> uh, Denmark, Argentina, New York, like all the different political battles are in my family. Super left, super right, libertarians, mm -hmm. lefties to the, you know, yeah. it's crazy. Uh, Thanksgivings can be difficult. Yeah. But I'll say this, you know, I absolutely pray. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love that 
the idea, but also what for me is really a deep belief, which is that we can't control everything. We're not in as much control as we think we are. And that the magnificence of biology and the magnificence of, of nature is, um, it, it's, imp it's impossible to, for me to conceive how that could be come about any other way. It just is. Now, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, full stop. Who do you pray to? Uh, that's an interesting one Good because question. I think uh, God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I absolutely do. I've actually started reading the Bible recently, start mm -hmm. to finish. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's my duty to like learn and in some sense compare Old and New Testament. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like really, I'm really interested in the stories, but I'm also, I'm fascinated by the story of us, right? And, and the story of everything. And so, but yeah, I pray out loud in the morning, um, sometimes again in the middle of the night if I wake up. Mm hmm and, um, and it's only recently that I've been doing this more often. It's given you yeah. peace? Or? Oh, my goodness. It's given me so much. It's given me peace. And, you know, it, it, this is going to sound weird, and probably people are going to be like, what are you talking about? If this, it, it, it works. Mm -hmm. It works. There's a, there's a way in which certain things I was grappling with, you know, um, I just couldn't resolve. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it. And it was all internal, and I just couldn't do it. What, how were you trying to resolve these things? Like have an answer? Yeah. Discipline myself. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't like I was super, uh, you know, undisciplined. I mean, obviously I have a lot of self-discipline, but yeah. you know, I, like I, I always pray, you know, I want to remove my defects of character. I want to, um, you know, I, I certainly pray for other people. Um, I, I mostly, you know, these days I pray for the ability to really harness as much care and love for other people and for myself, something I haven't been that good at mm -hmm. in my lifetime, um, in order to be able to put the best possible work into the world mm. to really serve. Like I really see myself as serving higher power. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a conduit. Right. Um, and the better I can do that, the better I'm serving, the better I'm serving, the more I feel connected to humanity. Do you think that with this, with this, I don't know if you've always felt like this. It sounds like it's more of a, a newer, newer feeling. But. Somewhat, although secretly. Yeah. Like in Santa Barbara, I'll just say there's this place, Sands Beach, down at the end of the beach, if anyone's ever been there. And mm -hmm. I used to run down there once a week. I always did a long run, long for me, run yeah. on Sunday, yeah. minus a 72 pound rock. Right. And I would pray. Mm. And I just pray for, you know, be honest with myself, be honest with others. And that was years ago. I was 18. Oh, okay. 19. 20. So, um, and then, you know, I've seen some hardship along the way. I mean, I would just mention that I've had three amazing scientific advisors, you know, Harry shot himself mm. two weeks after I told him we published a paper in science. He said, come on down to Santa Barbara. It'd be great to take you out for pizza and celebrate. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, he ate a bullet in the bathtub. Barbara died of cancer when she was 50. I'm mm -hmm. friends with her daughter. I, you know, saw her. She did have those two kids. <laughs> yeah. One's a neuroscientist. Oh man, um, at McGill, and um, she was like a mom to me. Mm -hmm. She died. I was speaking at her memorial, and then my postdoc advisor died. He was a pretty impressive guy in mm -hmm. his own right. And so, I, at one point, I'm thinking, like, what's going on? You know, I'm right. the common denominator. Right. How am I picking these people? Mm -hmm. But they were amazing, and you know, I had some friends commit suicide, you know, this kind of thing. And, and, you know, you live long enough, that's going to happen. People are going to go. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality. Mm -hmm. But there were times I'm like, you know, it was dark. It was, you know, like, where am I? Why? Why me? And at those moments too, just accepting that there's a plan and it's happening for a reason and I don't know what it is. And just putting my trust in that allowed me to, to grieve those things properly and to really try and you know, I got the message, I got the download to take the lessons from them and just not waste a single day mm. and to do things that re I really felt mattered. Mm. So to me, it's all always been linked right. to, you know, sort of forces greater than me, certainly. Does it feel like, you know, when I hearing all this, does it feel like once you've taken like the, a, a more, I don't know, intentional turn for being grateful and praying, you're not drinking since 2019. It seems like that's been in tandem with your success. 
Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, I always wanted to have a deeper relationship to to God. I always wanted that. And mm -hmm. I kind of was like, why don't I have that? Well, duh. That's like saying, I want to be fit. Why am I not, I'm not fit? Well, because you're not running, you're not, not lifting, you're not doing the things. It was like, yeah. and it was a, um, a couple of different people that kept showing up in my life and, and, and they were doing it. And it was like, well, pray. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've learned, and I certainly try and do this, that a lot of prayer is about listening. Mm. And a lot of prayer is about you, you ask for things or listen for things. And then an hour later, two days later, you go, wait. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't happen in the moment necessarily, just like fitness. I don't right. want to compare fitness. I don't want to trivialize prayer by, by comparing to right. fitness, but there's some parallels that are relevant. Yeah. yeah. You, uh, it's right. consistent work. Yeah, it's consistent work. And then all of a sudden, like things come up mm -hmm. and you're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe it. That makes so much sense. Now, I think that the success of the podcast, first of all, I'm incredibly grateful for it. Incredibly grateful. But in many ways, I'm doing exactly what I was doing when I was that six, seven, eight, nine year old kid. I'm yeah. learning and sharing. So it was always in me. And it always felt like this energy, this thing, like it's like, how did, how did I end up like this? How come all the other kids like don't have this? Mm -hmm. And how come sometimes it feels like a little bit of a, not a curse, but kind of a burden? Like, what do I do with this? And the deep satisfaction for me comes from acknowledging this is me. I've always been this way. It's not going to change. And that I, it's not coming from me. It's coming through me. Right. And I just want to do right by it. A lot of, you know, a lot of what Andrew Huberman is currently saying right now is low key, uh, high key, actually, something that I am experiencing myself. In a sense, this is Andrew Huberman's witness or Andrew Huberman's testimony in, in the Christian faith. But at the same time, for me, I've I've always been this way. I've always been very, very vocal. I've always been very, very opinionated, sometimes to my own detriment. I've always been very, very keen and uh, interested in reactions, in watching something, sharing my my thoughts and ideas, even to, to, to people, to the camera. But this channel blew up drastically when when the focus shift from this is what i want to share this is what i like self-improvement oh business this is what i like this is what i want to do to let's talk about god let's talk about jesus christ let's talk about the christian faith let's talk about the glory of god and i it's not like i changed right I, i'm still the same person but like what Andrew Huberman said, it's, I'm not doing it for me. Something's happening through me. And that's what I want to dedicate this channel to. For, for people to understand more the glory of God the Father and God the Son and the Holy Spirit. And just, just cr the Christian faith in general. Let's keep going. Liking the the the, con, the the conversation so far, mm -hmm. and I think we talked a it's little a, bit. Of, it's a gift, and you're honoring your gift. That's right, essentially. Yes, yes. Well, and I feel like yeah. if we're honoring our gifts, we're we're rewarded. Absolutely, mm. and and I think one of the biggest rewards recently comes from. And we talked a little bit about this on the mountain today. It's like for me, the sweet spot that I finally get steady glimpses of is being loving but also realistic mm -hmm. like mm. It, like you can be so loving that you lose touch with the reality too much trust isn't good either but you don't want to be unloving to yourself and others because then you look at the world through cynical lens and then you're not going to be doing your best work so for me it's all about being loving but realistic mm -hmm. and i think prayer helps me arrive there it does many many other things i also just feel like our time here is limited and I've been so blessed by people who have come along. I mean, those academic mentors meant everything to me, mm -hmm. but so did the academic mentors that I didn't work for directly that helped me along. So did the high school football coach that taught me how to lift. So did Lex Friedman, you, Joe Rogan, right? Rich Roll, people who gave me the opportunity to talk on their podcasts 
about science and and then eventually you know we started our own podcast so to me it's this like beautiful ecosystem and i never ever think of myself as like okay like i'm here professing to people i just mm -hmm. i just love being a part of it i also just like when I was a kid, I'm crewed up with a bunch of great people, mm -hmm. you know, and it's not all guys, Rhonda, Patrick too, who, by the way, folks, people always say, who was first man in on public facing science and health education? Uh, not first man, first woman, it was Rhonda. Mm -hmm. She was the first. Then right. came Matt Walker, me, some others, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the community of podcasters also, I feel like, wow, like this is as great as when I discovered neuroscience mm. and I actually feel more resonance with podcasters because it's really like of the love. You, you can't have a podcast that is worth anything in terms of its success or its content unless the person doing it loves that thing. Right. Like you can't, it's not journalism. It's not media. I mean, and there's a media component because mm -hmm. it's public facing, but it's like you love bow hunting. Yeah. You love fitness. You love hammering away every day right yeah, right and so it, you're you're basically talking about the things that you would be doing anyway and so mm -hmm. am i and so is joe and so is lex and so is rich right, you know right. so is Rhonda. yeah and we're make, getting it, paid for this right exactly I'd do this for free exactly so if anyone out there wants to do a podcast or social media what i would say is make sure that what you talk about is something that you really truly care about so that is the end of the video ladies and gentlemen i Towards the end of that is something that I am personally in alignment with the idea that this is something that I would talk about with my friends anyway. This is something that I would talk about with with people who I'm close with anyway, my loved ones. The idea of Christianity and my my fascination with the Christian faith, the 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 lore, the entirety of the lore of Christianity from from Genesis 1 1 all the way to Revelations when John ended the Bible with Amen. It's so it's so interesting. The fact that there's so many genres in the Bible, the fact that there's so many different authors, and each one points to every single one. It is just it's so, the whole idea of Christianity being being just a book is so it's so vapid. It's so skin deep. The straw man argument of oh the, the 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 Bible is just any fantasy book. It's like, have you even read any book from the Bible? Have you even, like in in essence, the Bible is the first book. So the miracle of the Bible and the miracle of 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 the Christian faith and the miracle of Jesus Christ and the miracle of of Everything in the Christian faith is just impossible to understate or, or to, to overstate. Yeah, you can't overstate the wonders and the glory of the Christian faith. In any case, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this video. Make sure you guys definitely go ahead and hit that subscribe button and the like button for that YouTube algorithm. Of course, comment down below your thoughts on this video. Of course, if you are going to comment, make sure to keep it cordial, peaceful, and respectful. That being said, it's been Ronald Aaron. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.